Hello, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. Of all the words that modern English has borrowed from Old Norse, the most obviously Old Norse in spirit is berserk. This word, which in Old Norse is singular berserker, plural berserkir, is a compound of two elements, and the second element is pretty clearly serker, shirt. But the first element has caused some debate. This could be the word bear, as in B-A-R-E, naked, implying that the berserker is someone who fights shirtless, or the bear could be from the same root as English bear. This could be the bear shirt, as in B-E-A-R shirt, like men who fight with shirts made of bear skin or with the strength of bears or something of that, that nature. The normal word for bear in Old Norse is bjorn, which is actually formed from that root bear by a process called uh, breaking in Old Norse, where an E turns into a J-A or j hooko uh, because of the influence of a vowel that used to be in the unstressed syllable behind it. Now, the question of whether it might be bear shirt or bear shirt, uh, naked shirt or, or, or animal shirt, notice how interesting it is that, that this language is closely enough related to English that uh, what's a homonym in English, uh, bear and bear, are also potentially homonyms in Old Norse. Uh, th this debate about whether it's it's naked or an animal um, might lean a little bit in my mind toward animal simply because the uh, the synonym of Berserker that's presented in some sagas is Ulfheven, that means wolf shirt. Uh, for instance, in Vatnsdala saga, the saga of the people of Vatnsdal, uh, we read, Ther Berserkir er Ulfhevnar vorukalavir. Ther hovdu vargstaka fyrr brynjur, og vordu framstaven og konungskipen. Those berserkers which were called Ulf Hethnir, wolf shirts, they had wolf cloaks over their armor, and they defended the bow, the front end of the king's ship. But a berserker is not a positive figure in the Norse sagas. Uh, this is not a hero. The berserker is almost always a villain that will be fought by our hero. More often than not, the hero of the saga will encounter a berserker who is identified as some kind of uh, vaguely foreign, well, like lightly foreign, like he'll be a Swede in Norway or a Norwegian in Iceland, uh, who wanders around the country challenging men for their wives or sisters or daughters. He will challenge them to a duel. The man will not want to, to uh, show cowardice by not accepting the duel, so he'll fight the berserker, but the berserker will win. Most often the berserker wins because he has uh, particular immunities he is impervious to fire and iron, thanks to Odin. Snorri, in his Inglinga saga, tells us this about Berserker. Hans men, foru brynjulausir og voru galnir sem hundar eða vargar, bittu í skjöldu sína, voru sterkir sem byrnir eða gritungar. Þeir dropu mannfólkit en eldr ne jórn orti og þó, þatt er kallaður Berserkangr. His men, Odin's men, went without armor and they were as crazy as dogs or wolves. They bit their shields and they were strong as bears or bulls. They killed men and neither iron nor fire affected them. This is called going berserk. And in many sagas where a hero fights a berserker, uh, we do see that he has to deal with the fact that the berserker is impervious to iron and or steel. For instance, in Egil's saga, one of the most memorable of the sagas of the Icelanders, Egil has to fight a berserk who is impervious to steel. Egil finally solves this by throwing his sword down, jumping on the guy, and biting his throat out. So Egil's pretty berserk himself from our perspective. Um, berserkers often travel in groups of 12. For instance, in the saga of Hervor and Hathrak, uh, in a scene that's also in the saga of Arrowod, Angantyr and his 11 brothers are berserkers who fight uh, the heroes Hjalmar and Odd in a uh, great battle, after which uh, Angantyr and his brothers are killed, but Angantyr has already arranged with his enemies that they will bury him after the battle uh, with his sword. They're not going to steal his sword. And his daughter Hervor uh, later comes and takes the sword from her zombie berserk father. It's a, it's a memorable scene in the saga of Hervor and Hathrek. And that's probably about the most positive that any berserk ever is in uh, willing his sword to his uh, daughter who actually is a uh, positive heroine. There are also, uh, in the sagas that deal with the conversion 
of Scandinavia to Christianity, berserks are often uh, uh, inimical to Christianity. So for instance, in the story of the conversion of uh, Iceland to Christianity, there are various stories about uh, berserks who were terrorizing the countryside and were immune to fire. But uh, a Christian missionary uh, proves that the Christian God is more powerful than the pagan God by blessing a fire in the name of Christ and that fire does actually harm the berserks. So there's some Christian missionary zeal that also uh, gets attached to uh, the negativity of the berserk as a figure. But men continue to be called berserks actually into the Christian period. Uh, so even in the contemporary sagas written in Iceland in the 1200s, about the 1200s, occasionally someone will be called a berserk. Uh, many people ask about whether the berserker rage might have been uh, motivated, induced by some kind of mushroom. That is strictly possible, but it's not actually said in any Old Norse source, so I'm very hesitant to say that that's actually the case. People can be violent uh, and go crazy in the fog of war whether or not they're taking drugs, uh, so I don't see a reason to assume that mushrooms were behind this uh, without some direct evidence that they were. And I should also mention that uh, one fascinating aspect of how negative the Berserker is viewed is that many Scandinavian law codes, including Grokos, the earliest Icelandic law code that's preserved, outlaw being a Berserk. Now I'm not sure exactly how you diagnose somebody with Berserkness, but uh, it's interesting to note that it is viewed negatively enough to be something that is punishable by law, at least in uh, these early Christian law codes. Well, for now, from beautiful Colorado, I'm wishing you all the best.